So you were married to your husband, but you were having children with other men. I was, and he raised them as his own and knew them to be his own until the divorce. He ended up unhoused. And the first man that I had the affair with is now is now my boyfriend, the father of my first child, my son. And uh, he was my husband's assistant manager. So he started bringing this guy around and I made, I made the first move, of course. I, I feel like I just sensed his kindness. I mean, still to this day, this, this man that I'm with is the kindest, most patient man I've ever met. But one day he came over my house without my ex-husband there and you know what happened next. And we only saw each other once a week to do this because of how my schedule, my ex-husband's schedule and his schedule. But the second affair, who the man is the father of my daughter, he actually worked with me this time. He was my maintenance guy at my leasing job. Again, just another kind man who was nice to me. And then with my daughter, she's Hispanic. So she came out a little more tan than the both of us. And just as she grew up, just kept that tan skin. And still, she looks so much like me. He was just like, yep, she looks like my wife. And here we are, with three baby daddies and two kids. So yeah, it's been wild. It's an evil world we live in. She belongs to the streets. I'm a gold digger. Of course I just married them for the money and I'm waiting for him to die in like five years. So My soon-to-be husband, like, he treats me well, he respects me, I don't have to ask for anything, but at the same time, I also do what I'm supposed to do with a woman. I cook, I clean, I suck, I fuck, I shut the fuck up. So I know how to keep my man. If a man has been through shit and he hasn't actually, like, dealt with it, and you want to push it out of him, push it, you gonna see some shit no, but you don't I'm not see. Pushing. Baby, talk to me, what's wrong? Because he's quiet for three hours, he don't want to talk to you right now. Because he was probably taught as a child. That's yeah, not true. It's it just how they wired. They're not always talkative. They need their space. They don't always want you in their fucking face. And if you are gonna be in their face, why are you nagging about why he's been quiet? Rub that man's feet while he's quiet. Sit on his lap while he plays his game. But look at a lot children. of girls complain about shit yeah, that's but women. I wake my husband up with a massage and coffee every single morning and every single night I'm scratching his um, scalp and like giving him a back massage until he falls asleep. It's important that he falls asleep first. And I would say something that's romantic that he does for me. Well, since I do all of the cooking, it's nice when he takes me out for dinner because it's like a, a little break and it's just special. And then also even just while we're here in Miami, he's kind of like my little bodyguard, like making sure if there's any men walking by, he just like puts his arm around me and just making sure that I'm protected. That's what it's really romantic and that's something that a woman could never do for a man w wow fantastic okay. wow okay i like it you are blessed men are owed a global apology you see we were sold this lie as women that we could have the most perfect man and we could have everything we've ever wanted and all our desires and dreams would come true. But it really was an illusion. It really was false. And what it's done for women is it's kept them single because the agenda of it was to remove the woman from the home and to stop the man wanting to return to it. So my global apology to men is that I'm sorry that I always thought I knew more and I'm sorry that I didn't let you lead. And I'm sorry that because of that, you would have never felt good enough. And that's simply not true. You are good enough and we do appreciate you and we do love you so much. And I'm sorry that those actions of mine made you feel like you weren't enough. The truth was that I didn't feel like I was enough and I was projecting that onto you and you didn't deserve that. So that's my global apology to all men. They trying to plan us against each other. They trying to do it by empowering women to make us feel so independent, like we don't need a man when we really do, especially if we have kids. Now, those of you that don't have kids yet, um, you might not need a man just yet, but those of us that do have kids, we need a man, sis, we do. Our kids need a man, all right? They do, very much so. But the system got us feeling like, woo, woo, woo. now we got all these feminine men, we got all these masculine women. This is what they wanted. And they winning. So strong men salute 
I respect you. I hope that and I pray that you find a woman that can let you lead and have some beautiful children for you. Woo, Lord, this is scary. For real, it really is. You're goddamn right. Women need to start making the first move. If anyone wants to be in a relationship, that's absolutely what has to happen. It just has to happen. Guys, in the comments, back me up on this. We have told men for years that their masculinity is toxic. Some men, as they got interested in dating, that's literally all they know is to stay away from women, is to not bother them, and definitely don't approach them. So there is nothing wrong with a woman approaching a man. That shows confidence. And you know what? I don't even know if the stat is true. I didn't do much research into this, but I, I did see that 86% of women who make the first move end up married. So, I mean, come on, that's pretty good. I mean, I don't even care if that's not even a true statistic. Hell, let's run with that. <laughs> but guys, back me up in the comments. Say, yeah, you would love that. Or uh, women say, yeah, I did, made the first move and I'm now engaged, married, whatever. I'm telling you, that's just the way it's got to be. You don't have to like it. I mean, I'm sure guys didn't like when they were being called, when their masculinity, when their whole being it was called toxic. They didn't like that. So start making the first move. And again, you don't have to like it. You don't have to like having to make the first move. You could still have a traditional relationship after that. This is just getting you in a damn relationship. And as far as, you know, not liking things, I do things every day that I don't like to do, but it makes me a better person, gets me to my goals. So these are just facts, okay? It's facts! It's facts! These are not facts. These are not facts. Would you rather be stuck in a forest with a man or a bear? Well, I've heard about bears. They don't always attack you, right? So maybe a bear. Um, with a bear. bear. Probably a bear. A hundred percent a bear. Definitely a bear. Some men are very scary out there. A bear. <laughs> Please help me. Please help me. What is Please your name, help me. Man? Karen Osborne. Please come now. Please come now. Send someone now. I'm being attacked by this bear. He's coming back. Hurry. He's he's broken my arms and my legs. I can't move. And I'm bleeding, and I'm gonna die. Please hurry. I'm gonna help as soon as possible. Oh my God, here he comes. Oh Lord, please dear God, no. Please dear God, no. Hurry, sir. Can we go away? Did you hear me? Sir? So we have help, sir, I'm gonna stay on the line with you. Okay. No. It's coming back. He's getting ready to attack me again. Please tell my husband I love him. How long will it take them to get here? I don't know, man. They're coming as fast as they can. We have animal control, police, and the ambulance in route. I tried to tell y'all. I tried to tell y'all. She said, come over, spend the night. She kid free. Whoa. It's like you sleeping with more than one partner. I'm straight on that. Oh, my God. Look at what. How do your bed get like this? All these bed bugs. Somebody was sleeping in this bed for real. Ain't no Brother, uh. what's that? What's that, brother?